Hello class, this is section 8.3. In this video, we are going to discuss the eigenfunction expansion technique for homogeneous boundary conditions. So we have here a differential equation, and it is non-homogeneous. However, we have homogeneous boundary conditions, v0t equals vlt equals 0. If you may remember, we could, by the reference temperature distribution method, reduce non-homogeneous boundary conditions into homogeneous boundary conditions. And we also have this initial condition, of course. Our first step is to ignore the non-homogeneous part for now and consider what eigenfunctions we get. So we will we'll get a boundary value problem with the Dirichlet boundary conditions v0 equals vl equals 0. So our, our eigenfunctions are going to satisfy this equation and the boundary conditions and the lambda n are, of course, um, the n pi over l squared that we are so familiar with by this point. And the goal here is to write down our v as a combination of this fn. So vxt equals sum of n equals 1 to infinity of a n t fn x. And this is known as the eigenfunction expansion of vxt. By the way, the fn are actually equal to sine, but I want to still write it down in terms of fn because I want to emphasize that this technique works whatever your eigenfunctions are, even if it isn't just a trig function. So yeah, well keep in mind that for this particular equation, the fn's are the sine n pi x over l. We can use this technique for any set of eigenfunctions. But anyway, we have this expansion of v. We know what the f and x are. They are our eigenfunctions. Our goal is to find out what the a and t are. To do that, we have to plug our eigenfunction expansion into our PDE. We'll need to take the t derivative and the double x derivative. So let's do that. We first take t derivative of both sides of the eigenfunction expansion. Note that f and x isn't affected since it doesn't depend on t. And we do the same thing when differentiating v with respect to x twice. The a and t doesn't depend on x, and so we can just ignore it and differentiate just the f and x term. I'll have to give you a warning. Here we did what is known as term-by-term -term differentiation of an infinite series. We took an infinite series and we assumed that we can get the derivative by differentiating every term of the infinite series. However, this is actually a very tricky topic. You can't always do this, and in class I hope to show you an example of why this, cannot, this isn't always valid. But this is actually a very difficult topic and beyond the scope of this class. If you are interested as to when you can and cannot differentiate an infinite series this way, there's a class uh, that senior math majors take called Analysis that will explain all of it. But for this class, here's a rule of thumb. The t derivative always works in this class. Whenever you see a problem like this, you can always assume that the, the t derivative of the eigenfunction expansion will work as you expect it to. And the x derivative part works only if v and your fn have the same boundary conditions and that the boundary conditions are all homogeneous. And this works because we know that we have these boundary conditions for fn, which are the same as our boundary conditions for v. So for our case, we can do all this, and we can just plug it in to our PDE. So we know our PDE says that dv dt is equal to k times the second derivative of x plus q tilde xt. Let's make sure that we are right. That's our PDE. dv dt equals k dv dx squared plus q, and that's what we have here. But remember that the eigenfunctions satisfy fn double prime equals minus lambda n fn. So what we can do is that we can replace the fn double prime with minus lambda n fn x, so rather than fn double prime here. We know that this is equal to minus lambda n fnx, just from 
this equation over here. But then we can notice that this term and this term have a common factor, the sum, common sum. So if you move it to the left, we get f and x, the sum of f and x when n equals 1 infinity, of uh, derivative of a and t plus lambda nk. Remember, this is just moving both terms to the left and factoring out the sum and the f and x equal to q tilde xt. Usually in these cases, q tilde xt is a piecewise smooth function. So we have a Fourier series. And let's call the Fourier coefficient q nt tilde. And you can, we know what the q and t tilde are by our regular Fourier series calculation. We get this. And if this seems a bit unfamiliar to you, I remember that the denominator is um, secretly L over 2. If Fn is sine, the denominator is L over 2, so you get the 2 over L term that you might find more familiar. But anyway, um, we know what the Q and T are. They are just the, the, Fourier, the Fourier coefficients, which we know how to calculate. But then we can compare the Fourier coefficients on the left-hand side with the Fourier coefficients on the right, and they have to be equal which imply L and K, A and T equals to this Q tilde and T term, which we already know what it is. And step three is to solve this integrating factor problem. And this goes back to ODEs. We know here that since we have a lambda and K over here, that our integrating factor is E lambda and K T we multiply each side of the equation by e lambda n k t, and this simplifies to a n t e lambda n k t derivative equals to q n t e lambda n k t, and then you just have to integrate both sides to solve the problem. I'm going to do things a little bit differently than I did them from the ODE video on integrating factors going to integrate respect to t, tau, sorry, uh, change the integrating variable to tau, and integrate from 0 to t. We are taking the derivative of integral, so by the fundamental theorem calculus. All right, so we have these, and this will allow us to solve a and t really easily. We have a and t equals to that integral, lambda, okay, this is tau, the k tau d tau plus a n naught, but here we are going to divide everything by e lambda n k t. So everything here divided by e lambda n k t. And this is our a n t. And we're just about done, except we first need to figure out what a n zero is. But that's pretty straightforward. Um, this comes from our initial condition. So we have gx equals vx0, plugging in t equals 0, and we simply look at our eigenfunction expansion again. This is our eigenfunction expansion, plugging in t equals 0. That's just going to be equal to sum n equals 1 to infinity a n of 0 f n of x. But this means that a n 0 are the Fourier coefficients for g x and we are done we have figured out the way to calculate a and t and therefore this gives us a solution for vxt that solves our partial differential equation problem